Hey guys, Brett Kelly here from 45 Drives and today we're doing a follow up to one of our past videos where I uh, tried to fail our Gluster Cluster while keeping a file transfer up. In that video, I had four XL60 Storinators fully loaded with 8TB drives in a distributed replica cluster and we were just trying to disrupt the file transfer by pulling network cords, pulling drives and even shutting down the servers to no avail. Although that was pretty cool, a lot of you wanted me to take it further and fully bring the whole thing down in a catastrophic failure, bring it all back up and show that everything was where it was supposed to be, no corruption or anything. All right, so this time I've got three Q30s in a replicated cluster. I've got 12 disks in each and I have nine terabytes of usable space. Now, this is a much smaller build than the last one I did, but it really illustrates the point, because I'm gonna do the same thing, that big or little, Cluster FS or just clustering in general is awesome. <laughs> All right, so just a little background on the setup I've got here. This is a two way replicated volume that is distributed across my three servers here. Meaning there is two copies of a file distributed across the total volume. This setup therefore gives me a level of high availability as I can fail any one of the three servers and still access all the files but as well as the benefit of being able to scale greater than the capacity of any single server. This is in contrast to a possible, I could have built a three-way server, a uh, three-way replica, sorry, where I could lose two of the three servers, but I would only ever have the capacity of a single server. So really, what I'm trying to say is GlusterFS and our hardware is so flexible that you can kind of build whatever you need to get the job done for you. Alright, so uh, let's get into it. I've got a Windows client here and I've got my cluster as I introduced. I'm going to start a file transfer like last time and I'm just, well, I'm going to go to town on this thing. No graceful shutdowns this time, I'm just pulling power. So uh, we'll pop tank up. Bear with me for a sec, guys. Big files, I know, but cluster does it really well. So I'm on a one gig connection, so I've maxed my line out. So, file's running, someone's using this thing. Let's take her down. Uh, you know what? Boop! You see, she hiccups just a bit. Oh, it's gonna go down. And it comes back up. Alright, so, uh, one failure, not too bad. Let's say this guy got zapped. They didn't put it on a surge protector, so the drives got killed. So, boop, boop. <laughs> I should stop making that noise. So, I have this in a two by six RAID Z2, and I just pulled three drives from each, and it's still going. So, gotta love replication. Um, and you know what, that's really not enough, so. There goes the power on that guy too. And sadly, now that that went down, with one left, it's not enough to keep the transfer up. We've killed it. But that's not enough for me, so I'm just gonna pull this guy too. This is the IT man's worst nightmare. This is, this is bad news. You can see tank is unavailable, but the good news is we can bring it all back up safe and sound. Now we're going to bring it back up, so I'll just give you a brief overview of what I'm going to do. The hardware in these two should be fine, they just lost power unexpectedly. So I'm going to bring these guys up and they're going to reshare the share back out. And this one, who experienced device failure, I'll have to replace the drives, I'll rebuild the pool, and then I'll re add it back into the cluster. So, so typically, one of your servers has catastrophic failure like this with the drives. Until you rebuild the whole pool, your stuff would be inaccessible. But because it's part of a bigger cluster, we can rebuild it with these two, take our time, fix the problem that happened here, and then just add it back in like nothing happened again. So we're going to get started. So I'll just turn these ones on. All right, so our first two nodes are up. Um, they went down fairly ungracefully, so I would imagine that 
the serv there's a good chance the services didn't start correctly. Um, but you never know, right? So we'll go in, we'll check the raid, we'll check the services. And in a perfect world, it might, it might have already started the share for us, but uh, we're gonna find out. Um, once we get these two up and running and they're sharing the service again and everyone can get working, we will uh, bring the third node back up, rebuild the raid, and add it back in like nothing happened. All right, so let's get started. I've remoted into the first two nodes here. And I'm just gonna, first we'll, uh, See, we'll check the raids first. We'll go, they should be all right because I didn't touch any of these disks, but you never know. So everything's online, that's good. Do that to the next. Online. Everything's mounted. Alrighty, so let's uh, check the service. The Gluster service. Status, Gluster D. And that's running. Very nice. Both of them, okay. So that means my volume should be all right. Let's make sure. Cluster ball status. So there's my CTDB volume. That's up and running. Tank, up and running. So uh, let's see if the share is started. Status B. Okay, that's good news. Yep, and so these two nodes are up is okay, and the third is disconnected, just as I wanted. So let's make sure I can ping it. It's good news, so that's, that's pretty slick. Hard power, just on reboot. Yep, brought everything back. Okay, so uh, let's make sure we can write to it, because that's all well and good reading, but, and there we go, we can make a new folder, that's good news. I'm just going to drag some files over, because why not, just to be extra sure. So oh, storage, uh, trace, solid works. Pull the Blanco disk over. Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, so this we're back up. So everyone can get back to work now. As far as they're concerned, cluster safe. Um, however, should one of these go down right now, the, serve, the, the cluster would go back down, so we gotta get this third one up and running as soon as possible. All right, so these nodes are back up and running, the share is accessible, everyone's back to work. So we gotta rebuild the raid here, uh, let it resync. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of my, uh, my failed drives here. I got equivalent replacements here. So I can just pop these in wherever. One, two, three, All right, so uh, I replaced my drives. Now I have to go back, uh, tell the, the volume to, sorry, not the volume, the Z pool to switch out the old ones, replace them with the new ones. It'll start a resync. And when it's done the resync, we can add it back into the Gluster volume and we're all done. All right, so I plugged my disks in and uh, let's see if the system can see it. Yeah, so you can see the yellow, the yellow entries are my new disks. So let's check the status of our Z pool. Okay, so we've got four unavailable disks. We just need to swap them out. Let's just start with the first one. So it's just Z pool replace tank. So the first disk I have to replace is 1 3. And I'm going to replace it with, oh, here, you know what? I'm going to get my map back up. Okay, Z pool. I want to see both. Sorry, people. All right, so the first one I have to place is disk 1-3, so slot 1-3, and um, I've got, actually, I put one right back in 1-3, so that's perfect. I'll just replace it with itself. And place 1-3, tank. That's not the name of the pool. And it's working away here. Okay, so one three is now turned green, which means it wrote partitions to it. That's good. Uh, Z pool status, Z pool. And now you can see one three's back in. It's still degraded because I still have three more disks to re-add in. 
But good news, nothing's too broken. It's that simple. Z pool replaced. Let's do the next one. All right, so the raid rebuilt, and uh, I just re added it back into the CTB share so uh, all our Windows clients can get on the Sama share. Um, so, yeah, all nodes are okay. We can ping Proto now. If I spelled it right, I can. There we go. Ping Proto. So, all three nodes are good. And uh, let's see if we're still on our share. Uh, yeah. Just going to hang for a bit. Yep. There it is. So... Failed the whole pool, brought it back up. Files are still there. Good news. All right, so we had our cluster up and running and sharing a Windows share out to our clients. We were moving files across, and uh, then we simulated every IT person's worst nightmare. Uh, just full-on ungraceful power shutdown, full-on drive failure in one pod. However, the service stayed up until we lost power on two of our nodes. So quite resilient, but even better, we were able to plug it all back in. These two nodes started really with no problem at all. So we were able to get everything back up and running pretty quickly. And you can take a little more time to rebuild your failed array and rejoin it like nothing really went too wrong. So uh, we took what, what would really ruin someone's month and just made it an afternoon affair. So uh, it's pretty awesome. And really what it, what it goes to show is my last video we did this, we did this with a huge cluster, almost near a petabyte. But with this one, we only had nine terabytes of usable space. But the point is, cluster, or clustering in general, open source tools and hardware is just, you, you can just build something so crazy and resilient that big, small, it's great. All right guys, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you're interested in clustering, our Storinators are the most robust, reliable, and affordable servers out there. So give us a call, send us an email, we'd love to help. Um, yeah, thanks again.